Hello and welcome to this video on types of cloud computing services. My name is Prabhjot Singh Bakshi and I am your instructor for this course. In the previous video, you saw the need to move to cloud computing. In this video, we are going to talk about the various categories of cloud computing services. We will also discuss the benefits of using cloud computing. At the end of this video, you would be able to list the various categories of cloud computing services. Describe the benefits of cloud computing. The industry has categorized three types of cloud computing services, namely ES, PaaS, and SaaS. As a developer, each cloud service you use will fall under one of these categories. So what do each of these mean? SaaS stands for Software as a Service and is a software model in which both the application and the data required is hosted on cloud by the independent developers. And a user can access the software as and when required from any location. Examples of SaaS are email sites, your social media sites. PaaS stands for platform as a service and is a model in which developer creates software using tools and other utilities of a cloud provider. Example of PaaS are websites designed, developed and hosted on cloud. ES stands for infrastructure as a service and is a model in which cloud provider provides both hardware and the software. Example of EAS are creation of virtual machine on a cloud infrastructure. Let us now look at how these services are used. We will take the example of a football cup that is held each year for 15 days. For a period of six weeks prior to the event and for the duration of the event, the organization that runs the cup requires increased computing and storage capacity. Once that period is over, the organization does not need these until the next year. We will now create a very basic website for the organization using a cloud service. Let's create a website for which I would like to go to windowsazure.com and log in into the portal. So I have to give the credentials here. So probably you can see on the left hand side various features of Microsoft Azure and one of them is website and I'm going to click on a website and would like to park a name here for the website. So we call it as football cup. And I'm going to select East Asia as a region. So it's going to take some time to get created and running. And now let's move to Visual Studio 2013 to create a website. And then we'll use Visual Studio 2013 to publish the website to this portal. I'm going to select the option website here, ASP.NET blank website, right click, add new item, 
transform I'm going to drag an image control and link with the image which I have it of the football banner. Here it is. So the website is ready, it's developed. Now it's time to publish it. So right click on this and I say publish. I have to click on a button import. And you can see I have already logged in with Manipal Azure session, which is my Microsoft Azure credentials. As a result, I would be able to access the website park name, which is Football Cup. And all I have to do is say OK here, move next, next, and publish. So probably another couple of seconds, you're going to see that it's going to get hosted and it's going to be available as a URL for you to view it. And here's it. Now we have the URL with us. If the user uses this URL to open the site and book the ticket, it is called SAS. So let me use this URL and open the website. In cloud, we can dynamically spin up and spin down the number of servers or resources based on our requirement. So basically, we end up paying only for what we use. So in off-peak season, we can always settle down the server utilization and park the money for the next season. I'll show you how to do this on your Azure portal. For this, we click on Websites, click on Football Cup, and there's an option out here, it's called Scale. I'm going to click on Scale. And then, I'll move from Free to Basic Plan Mode. And you can see there's an option here, Instance Count. I can always increase this. And I can select the configuration as well as instance sizes is also concerned. So as a developer, my action of creating, hosting and managing these servers falls under PaaS category. Now let us look at an example that will help us understand infrastructure as a service. Let's look at a situation in which a training institute needs to conduct a training session for 25 students for three days on Bistock servers. As the hardware required for this course is expensive with high configuration, that too for just three days. It makes sense to create virtual machines over the cloud infrastructure instead of buying the hardware and software. We will now look at how to create one virtual machine. Now let's open Azure portal. And we go for an option on left hand side, virtual machines. And I'm going to click on create a new virtual machine. And give it a name to the machine as Manipal VM. And if you see, there are images where I can pick Linux also, but I'll stick to Windows Server, Microsoft Technology. And we'll give it a username here. It's going to take a couple of minutes and virtual 
machine would be up and running for use. So you can see it, it's in a status which is running and I'll click on Manipal VM, go to endpoint and there is a remote desktop settings which probably have to go there and edit it. We'll make it 3389 and save it. Once it's saved, I'm going to use remote desktop to access it. So it's getting saved now. Let's see. And then I'm going back to the VM. There's an option here called connect. And I can save this file somewhere in my C drive. I have to log in the credentials of my virtual machine here. Probably just a moment and we would be able to access the machine. So here we can see the machine is there with us and probably it will take just one more mo minute and obviously you know it's running for the first time so it's going to be a little heavy, it's going to take a little time. On the top you can see the name of the machine I have given, it's Prab. So here we have the server with us, Windows Server 2012. So this is the server which is available for us to use it and now I'm going to minimize this. So this is my PC and this is my server. And let's close this. I mean you are supposed to shut down and what I'm going to do next is go to the portal. And I'm going to delete the machine in order to avoid being charged unnecessary because I'm not going to use it tomorrow. So I just want to kill it here itself. So there's an option here called delete. I select this machine and I'm going to click on delete. Probably delete the disk. Let us recap what we just learned. When you were using my website, it is SaaS. As a developer, I hosted the website and then was able to scale up and scale down the server. This is an example of PaaS. When I created a virtual machine, I was in a control from the OS level. This is an example of Yes. On your screen, you can see a comparison of various aspects of cloud computing with traditional IT. As you can see, 
in the SaaS category, the user does not own any of the data or applications. In the PaaS category, the developer is responsible for and is the owner of the application and the data. In the ES category, the administrator chooses and manages the OS onwards but has no control over the physical machines. There are many benefits to using cloud computing. Chief benefits are that it is cost effective because we can spin up, spin down the server or resources as and when required. You can share resources to achieve economics of scales. It is very quick and fast. As you would have noticed, it took me just a couple of minutes to roll out a virtual machine for use. You have to pay only for what you use. The billing period is per minute. This means that you are not billed for even a minute more than what you use. For this course, we are using Microsoft Azure as our first and best choice of cloud computing platform. However, there are other cloud computing platforms. The names are listed on your screen. Let us now look at the key points that we discussed in the video. There are three kinds of cloud services, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Key benefits of using cloud computing are that it is economical to use and scalable. 